Welcome back to Election 360. Now we're going straight into the conversation. Joining us in studio is independent presidential candidate Kofi Karanting. And we're going to be having the big conversation. We'll be focusing on what exactly, first of all, triggered his interest in wanting to lead Ghana and then expanded into some specifics regarding his um, manifesto and what he intends to do for Ghana if he finally does get the mandate. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us on election. Martin, it's a great pleasure to be here. Great. Thanks for Thanks. coming. To start yeah. with, I mean, a few minutes ago, we just talked about the performance of independent candidates over the uh, many electoral years. Very abysmal. Actually, it looks like it's dwindling. But you have seen that, but still decided to want to mm -hmm. run. What different would it be for you, you think, if, if, if you do, do participate in this year's election? The independents never had a candidate. You have a candidate for the, you need a candidate for the moment who speaks the language of the people. If you don't have the candidate, it's almost as good as not even being here. So um, we here, we represent the people, the hopes and aspirations of the people, the needs and the times required for somebody like me to be present and that's why I'm here. Listen, if you were to take a look at what happened uh, 2020, uh, almost 5 million people did not vote. They were registered, but did not vote, right or right. Mm -hmm. So it tells you something. And when the Afrobarometer um, a survey was done, uh, most of them said they didn't have a candidate of choice on the ballot. So now I'm here. So beyond the two political parties, when it comes to the independent candidates, mm -hmm. You believe you are the candidate of choice. It's not what I believe. It's what's fact. Is that what you get from the people? Absolutely. Have you listened? Obviously, you haven't listened to me, but I'll give you a chance to listen to me in a few minutes when we roll, and you will know that I'm the candidate. Mm. But of the people who have been cleared by the Electoral Commission, mm -hmm. there are four people going independent. So if all the uh, over 18 million registered voters decide not to vote for either of the political parties, they still have four people to choose from. What makes you outstanding of the four? Um, what we stand for, and I could give it to you, our threesome, mega threesome. Number one, change the constitution. Not hug the constitution, not reform. Change the constitution, number one. Number two, eradicate corruption. That means we're going to truncate corruption. Everybody talks about, well, we're going to reform, we're going to take a look. We're gonna, no, we're going to eradicate corruption, which means, Martin, we're going to go back or well, last 32 years, take a look at everyone who caused financial loss to the state, prosecute, get our money back plus interest, plus fees, plus charges, so we can use that to run the economy. Mm. Nobody says that, only I. That's why I'm different. Okay. But Did you ever hear that from anyone? Uh, well, I, I, I'm glad. I, 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 I mean, the, the political parties, I mean, the issue of corruption is always topical in political conversations. And it hasn't been solved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so there clearly is a challenge there. So how then do you intend to solve it that makes you different from, from simple. what we've been done during the last Martin, few years? simple. We're going to solve corruption three ways. Administratively, criminally, psychologically. Administratively means you start with the base level, which is institutional infrastructure. Institutional infrastructure means you're going to have everything you need to perform, and mm -hmm. we're going to hold you accountable to it. And then <clears throat> from the institutional infrastructure, we're going to have systems <clears throat> run based, right? <clears throat> systems are three prong. Uh, it starts with an objective and mechanical part of the system and uh, the accountability part of the system, which right. we don't have in Ghana because everything in Ghana runs on personality, which is um, not based on risk. It's based on trust. Mm. Trust-based systems don't work. Okay. Risk-based systems is what works because risk-based systems comes with the uh, 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 discipline part, which is holding them accountable. There's a consequence for everything that goes wrong. So a three-based system, first of all, a lot of people talk very loosely about systems, systems, systems. They don't understand what systems are. Mm. Systems are performance behavioral mechanisms that guide you to a specific outcome. Okay. Okay, so everything we do in Ghana, oh, personality-based. If it's Martin, the results are different. If it's Kofi, the results are different because it's not based on any system. Mm. You see, when you go to Kentucky Fried Chicken or Pizza Hut, the pizza is always the same, the burger is always the same because it's 
risk-based. It's not personality run, it's a system run. And that's what we're going to convert Ghana to be. So uh, we're going to have the institutional infrastructure, then we're going to have uh, the system, and then we're going to have it run on blockchain, which is in itself an algorithmic register-based transaction module that Ghana has never had. Okay. It's not just based on digitization. It doesn't mean anything when somebody says digitization because digitization by itself cannot be existent without something. You need something first, then you digitize. Okay. You can't digitize in a vacuum. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So Good. Now, let's uh, look at Now, we your... didn't finish your question. So, the third part. You okay. Tell me so, now, we just talked about the administrative part. Uh, okay. This thing is a whole hour. But okay. just to abbreviate this thing. So, the administrative... I just talked about the administrative side. Criminally means everything you do, you prosecute, you put them in jail. The axe comes down. You see? And the type of leadership structure that we have, of course, we don't have a leadership of excellence. If you have a leadership of excellence, then it punishes corruption. It punishes substandardness. And then the leadership of excellence also promotes values and uh, 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 merit. Mm. And then you create a, a, a functional government system that holds that in, in equilibrium. That's the homeostasis of governance. We don't have that in Ghana. Do we? You say we don't? Uh, don't you see, don't, <laughs> go outside, Martin. So, right, but, but uh, now let's shift the focus to what you've been telling Ghanaians. Have you been campaigning? Where have you Absolutely. been? Absolutely. We, we, we do nothing um, uh, in the boondocks. Uh, we go into the villages, we're meeting people, we're talking to them. Listen, the whole, how we formulated our threesome, which is eradicate corruption, institute a national development plan, and uh, uh, um, uh, 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 put together uh, the uh, National Development Plan is by talking to people since 2020, after we were disqualified uh, in the election. We went around all the 261 districts and spoke to people, and that's how we were able to formulate uh, this spec, mm. this specification that we have. And this is what's going to change Ghana. Nobody has the plan that we have. And that's why we know we're the only ones who are going to be able to change Ghana. Because this is why, for 32 years, I could tell you right now, and if I go down my national development plan, mm -hmm. not one single item on the national development plan has been handled by MPP and DC. Fact. And that is a national development plan that you have put together after Absolutely. going around the country. Absolutely. So the country already also has uh, a national development no, they don't. plan, a commission that is supposed to roll out a plan. That's a useless is commission. Is, is, is useless. Absolutely. Because have you seen their anything? Plans are different from what no, you No, because it hasn't re matriculated to any result. What can you tell me have the national, Develop uh, uh, the national development plan commission done? Tell me. Tell me one. One. Go ahead. Tell the cameras. Tell me. Cameras. Tell them. Well, I'm asking the question. So you just, based on, they haven't done anything. based on comparison, you believe they've not done anything as a result of your analysis or understanding of what you've got. It's not my analysis. Now. It's fact, Martin. They have not done anything. That's why you think there is one and there isn't. There's no results to show. Okay. What our plan is, is to show results. And the difference is we are going to entrench it in a constitution. Mm. These guys are not entrenching the Constitution. If we had a national development plan that worked, we wouldn't have people coming in with their manifestos, right or right? It doesn't work. That's why people are coming in with their manifestos. So should, should it be my understanding that you believe there should be a national development plan mm -hmm. that irrespective of who is in government, whether political or an independent, that is the structure they must all follow? That's that the only way we could go as a country. We need to address the problems of Ghana as a holistic mm. problem that everybody contributes to the solving of it and everybody takes part. We can't have people come and piecemeal this thing. What is this? A restaurant? No. This is a country, sovereign country. So when you, you, you say you've been around, you've been to the rural areas, what kind of responses do you get from the electorate? And do you have the confidence that those responses will translate into votes? This is fact. I've been all over the, the world. 
I've been to all the successful economies of the world and this is what they do. So we know that there is a proven record if we do this. So it's, this is not something we're going to wish, wash, hold, hope. No, this is something that has worked. If not, Singapore would not be where it is. If not, China would not be where it is. If not, Germany and all these other countries, Japan, Dubai, they just did it 20 years. Go look at Dubai, 20 years. And per the plan you have, what timelines are you looking at seeing some positive transformation of the economy? 24 hours. I get in, they swear me into power. 24 hours, we see results, start seeing results. What kind of results would we be seeing in 24 hours after you've been sworn in? What we're going to implement, we're going to start implementing, we're going to tell our council to start paperwork to the um, uh, 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 parliament to change the constitution. Okay, in 24 hours we're going to uh, um, uh, implement, electoral commission is going to get an order to implement representation of the People's Amendment Act. Okay, we have six million, uh, we have uh, six billion dollars coming into Ghana's economy by the diasporans and we don't allow them to vote. Does that sound like it's a fair deal? So you would ensure that we implement ROPA? Without a doubt. Okay. We have to implement ROPA because we take, if it weren't for the diaspora, the whole country would be crushed, shut down. We get six billion dollars of their money plus they don't put any taxes on it. There's no interest on it. There's no strings attached. Free money, and we don't allow them to vote. It doesn't sound like it's fair to me. Mm. And in, in trying to, you know, bring this fine, the conversation to an end, you also mentioned the fact that you are going to get Parliament to pass or expedite the passage of some of the uh, bills or instituting the um, agenda that you have. But you would not have people in Parliament because you need people to help govern the country. The we people who are in parliament are not there to serve a precedent. They mm. are in parliament to serve their constituents. Their loyalty is not to me. If you're not there to serve your people, get out. And I'll make sure you get out. Mm. And what if the agenda they have or the idea of development for their constituents is at variance with that of can be. the elected president. It can be. Everything I talk about is for the benefit of the Ghanaian. That's why I'm here. If you're, if you're a parliamentarian and you don't know what you're talking about or you don't have an agenda to help your people, you out. It's okay. as simple as that. How many, listen, how many difference of, we want to build a bridge, we want to build markets, we want to put hospitals up, we want to put... How different can yours be from mine? The only difference is mine is going to be bigger than yours. Mm. Because I am the, from the executive office. I signed the approval to the finance minister to give you the money. Mm. So I don't have any limits. So how is, how is yours going to be different from mine? Smaller. Mine is going to be bigger than yours. But you are likely to have the agenda for the nation. There are... You know, we, have, we are trying as a nation and to some extent have succeeded in hoping to decentralize our governance system. Mm -hmm. So if at a local level, the people think that it is a road or a school or a bridge that they need, and at the top level, you do not see it that way, then there's definitely going to be some disagreement. All the big ticket items are going to be in the national development plan. At the local level, it's about uh, uh, it's about preservation, mm. you see, and maintenance. That's what they're going to do. And they're going to do little things like upkeep. So they're not going to be in the way of the big government. They're not. Okay. We're going to do the big ticket items because of the, uh, uh, the over, uh, uh, overlook and the funding. Okay. And then we need to bring in uh, specialities that know what they're doing at that level. So once it's things are put in, then local level is about preservation and maintenance. Right. And finally, how are you funding your campaign? You and I, uh, I'm going to ask you for a check a moment I'm here. <laughs> because, <laughs> listen, our campaign is for the Ghanaian people, and that's why we're asking you, everybody, you believe in Kofi Kranti and what we stand for, we want you to put money into 059-999-5120. 59 Nobody, nobody 
is going to be able to do the things that we are going to do, like I said, three things, I'll make a threesome, change the constitution. You know, as much as I know, that without a constitutional change, Ghana can never change. You know that, because the constitution has legalized corruption. And that's why uh, good old Galamse is where it is today, right? Mm. And I, listen, this is, a, this is, this is also uh, uh, to the president. Uh, I had the president take a challenge to pre President Mahama that he, let's wait for him to come in. He's not going to be able to handle Galamse. Mr. President, listen to me. This is Kofi Kranting. You give me one month, one month, I will stop Galamse in this country. You could take that challenge or put my neck on a guillotine outside a circle. One month I'll stop Galamse. It's not because we cannot stop Galamse, it's because you don't have the will to stop Galamse because it's your own people who are in Galamse. Give me one month and I'll stop Galamse in this country. And mm. I, I challenge, I take the opportunity to challenge all the presidential candidates to a, uh, to a debate right here on your show. How will it be? That would be nice, Martin. Very nice. Right? Call them. Let's sit down. Let's talk about how to move Ghana forward. Mm. If you are ready to change Ghana, I'm the only one who could change Ghana. Perfect. And if they are up to it, come here, sit with Mr. Martin here. Let's yeah. have a debate. Thank you so much for coming. Through. You're the best. Yeah, thank Let's you so much. Happen. Right. So you've been watching Election 360. We've been speaking to Kofi Kranting, who is the leader of the New Vision Movement. And he's standing as an independent candidate, hoping that at least... His message goes down well with you. You hear him out and give him the nod on December 7th when you go to the polls.